no, there's no way it works. So, welcome back to our uh, first video in the studio. Sono speakers to my right, we've got the tools to the left. Today we've got a big, big project on and I really, really hope it's gonna work because if it does, we're gonna save ourselves a hell of a load of money. Today's video, guys, is sponsored by Squarespace. So for me to explain why we're gonna do this, other than hopefully having some fun if it works, I wanna explain what we're gonna make. So this is a Sono speaker. It's the IKEA Sono speaker, Symphonist Klein, and it's actually the cheapest way into Sonos. Now, if you wanted to add Sonos, let's say, to your own stereo system that you've got at home, you need to buy one of these, which is called the Sonos Connect. They also make a thing called the Sonos Connect Amp, which which is even more expensive, but the Sonos Connect is 399, 400 pounds. One of these speakers is like 99 pounds from IKEA. So essentially what we're gonna do is hack this today and install an RCA jack on the side of it so we can go ahead and hook in our amplifier to this speaker and sort of steal it's audio. This should be really fun. So we may as well jump straight into this, guys. The first thing I'm gonna have to do is take this speaker apart. The reason why I'm doing this, though, is basically because I want to have some Sonos in my house uh, that are on my speakers that are in the roof, like my ceiling-mounted speakers, and I have my own amplifier already for those. However, I don't wanna spend 400 pounds on the Sonos Connect amp. Now, obviously, what we could do is take this speaker apart and uh, connect directly to the speaker, turn terminals that are on the back of these, these speakers here. You've got a silk dome tweeter there and then a little woofer there. But what we're actually gonna do is solder to the DAC inside of here so we can get, like I say, a low level out so we can connect RCA up to this bad boy. So there's a few little screws here that we need to remove in order to get the main board out of here because what we're essentially what we've got to do is solder onto the main board onto some tiny, tiny, tiny little contacts. And when I mean tiny, I mean tiny little contacts. So we don't want to be messing around in here. We need to get everything out. Okay, so guys, super, super interesting. This is the main control board that we're gonna be focusing on a little bit later, and it's really interesting in itself, but I wanna show you what's inside of here. So actually, on the back, you see that's where you connect your AC power into this. If you flip this round on the inside, that is the AC power that then connects to the board, if that makes sense. And then over here, you see these black things, you're probably thinking, what are they? I've actually had to disconnect them from the main board too with these connectors here. These are actually the Wi-Fi antennas that allow the speaker to communicate with Wi-Fi, essentially. Now, if you know, the board actually has an Ethernet port on the back of it if you do want to go Ethernet with these speakers as you know but it's just fun to see this all dismantled and what's on the other side what you're not really meant to be seeing. Okay let's whack out the soldering iron and see if we can make this connection. If you, uh, well, the keen eyes of you will know that right here, this looks like something familiar. That's because it is. This is just your normal standard Wi-Fi card. I think this is just an 802.11n card. And then this is the cable that connects to the speakers. We can actually go ahead and just disconnect that from the main board now because we actually don't need it anymore because we're not gonna be using these speakers. Okay, so there's a few capacitors essentially on this board. Now you're gonna be able to see with the overlay, we're gonna be focusing on this capacitor and this capacitor. Now they are tiny and I'm really not sure my soldering skills are gonna be up to the job of attaching some wires to these. But essentially the job of this part of the board is to take the digital signal and convert it to analog before it's sent to the internal amplifier. Now we want the signal before it's sent to the internal amp in this because we want to use our own amplifier. That is the whole point of this. Okay, so soldering, hardest part, all out the way. Probably this isn't gonna work, to be perfectly honest with you, because if you look down here, where I've actually had to solder to is so, 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 so small. The guide that I'm following that I put in the description is, uh, he's zoomed in and I thought these were a hell of a lot bigger than they are. But if this works, it's gonna be amazing. This is our low frequency and our high frequency. And then we also have another cable, which I've soldered to the board all the way over here. This is just our ground. 
So now essentially these are going to be connected together and then the inbuilt crossover is going to take care of that. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Essentially we're just going to combine the low and high frequencies together. Coming through in a sec. Final touches. I am using here a little bit of electric tape just to secure these wires together. If you were going to do this properly, I'd recommend using some hot glue because what you could do is, and I actually bought these, but I'm not going to do it. I bought some of these tiny little switches that I was going to install, which could activate and deactivate the original speakers that are inside of the Symphonics, but I don't think I'm ever going to use these Symphonics speakers again. The reason I'm saying to use hot glue is because if you were going to use these speakers again, they could cause vibrations in the shell and mess up your sort of subpar soldering or whatever. But essentially what's going to happen now is with these two holes here, this little board is going to fit in the back, as you can see, looks like an RCA connector, that's because it is. So because we've got two RCA connectors and we've only got mono audio coming out of this, the reason why I've taped these together is because, well, it's just gonna split the mono audio into left and right or two mono tracks. So now these can be pushed through the hole so we have both of our negatives going through either side and then we're also going to have a positive going through either side. I do just love a ghetto build like this, it's just so cool. So we have our positive and negative coming out the back. Now essentially all we need to do is put all the gubbins of this Sono Symphony speaker back into its shell, screw it all back in, connect our RCAs and see if we have wasted our time or not. There we have our terminals that we can go ahead and connect, hopefully, to our amplifier. And this is going to sit flush on the back of the board. And there we go. We now have our hacked IKEA Symphony speaker with RCA outputs on the back. Now we test it. So we're going to go ahead and plug in to the back of these Bose speakers, turn them down, plug now into the back of this here like so. We'll give these a little bit of volume. Okay, we've got no nasty static noises. So now we just see if it works, right? We get the, the app here. We'll give it some volume here on Sonos and then hopefully turn up these speakers. No, no, there's no way it works. There's no way it works. Yeah, there's no way it's working. That's working. Only out of this side. Oh, no. Dude! I'm literally blown away. I can't believe it works. Like, I just wasn't expecting it to work. Dude! <laughs> what? <laughs> We've built our own Sonos Connect and saved like 300 pounds. Just with a bit of DIY. Sounds amazing too! As usual, for making this possible, like we've just uh, almost trashed, but actually made work a uh, hundred pound speaker here, we need to thank our sponsors, Squarespace. Squarespace is essentially the online website where you guys can go to build your own website. Essentially, it's super, super easy. They handle everything from the website creation, you making the website, to things like the domain, which are usually a little bit harder. You go ahead and upload all of your own images, text, whatever you'd like. You can choose from thousands of their templates and the websites do just look gorgeous. Here's an example of a few of my websites that are owned by me, built on Squarespace themselves. I use them, just take my word for it. They've got built-in SEO so you can see how your website's going to appear on search engines like Google. And honestly guys, I couldn't recommend them enough. They're just great. So if you guys want to get 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain, use code TECHFLOW or go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW because it would really help us out. But for now guys, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and we will see you in the next one. Adios.